Hey guys, we're back. Hello. So today uh, we are going to have a different stream. I'm going to have three hosts. So first one is Defwen. His real name is Jaroslav Zizek. Hey He's our guys. level designer and today we're going to talk about so level today, design. Uh, we are going so to have a the first mission stream. should be Clash Console. This is your location, so, right? Yes, uh, it's actually my first location. Your first location when you arrived in Bohemia? Then I arrived in Bohemia. So what was the idea behind it? So how did well, you approach it? The idea was to actually learn the stuff about the metrics in the link and the clash and to learn the level design for Project Argo. And you did something before that, right? You, have, you did some levels. Yes, uh, I work uh, independently uh, uh, in the community in another game and then stuff basically on my own. All right. Sorry for the echo. I have it muted, but it didn't work. Now it should be fine. All right. So how is that different to do levels in Arma and to do something else? Well, the major difference is that you have a schedule. When you work on your own, that you Warning. can do Enemies are whatever you want the and when you have time. Uh, but when you work, you have a schedule, uh, you have a boss who tells you what to do, and your decision has to be consi uh, considered. Yeah, yeah. And what about the ideas? Free will, or is that a brainstorming phase and stuff like that? How does that work? Uh, of course, I have my uh, free will, but uh, in the end, I have to either uh, talk with uh, my colleagues or my boss and decide what to do and what to not, because not every idea is great objective. at mm -hmm. the first try. Mm -hmm. But together, we can actually find a better solution or agree that the first solution was actually very great. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, I remember you did something very special to Kanson because it was different in the in the origin on the original Malden. So what was your first Capture idea you had? Objective. Well, the first idea was to remake the Kanson, basically almost to one to one with dominant or chart, which later proved not to be the perfect solution. So we started to add in stuff around to fit our metrics and. Uh, find some landmarks because in the original flashpoint uh, it was uh, same buildings and all the stuff but to navigate the players uh, we had to create something more rememberable, uh, rememberable. all right and uh, what about because I I remember the trees I will I will show them later those are pretty good landmark yeah, that was actually the first idea, which was uh, greatly ap appreciated. All right. And uh, if you were to talk about the, the metrics, what are those? How does that work? So well, for a link, the important is the time, so, so everybody can capture uh, the points in uh, almost same time. But, for example, for the Clash we are playing right now, uh, the points have to be well defendable and the player should not get lost easily. Mm -hmm. So in, put there some landmarks so the player can know e the exact position. Mm -hmm. And uh, how is that achieved? You know, the when well defendable points and stuff like that? Well, we have two options, either in the sandbox yeah. or in the level design mm -hmm. phase that's done in the 3D editor. Mm -hmm. So, for example, the most important landmarks, Select as you mentioned, the trees, uh, that's done in the sandbox area, which are gonna stay for the future. For, for the Malden 20 For the Malden DLC. Yeah, yeah. But uh, the level design thing is done in the 3D editor and it's just scenario specific. Also, it's in the mission. So, it's in the mission. All right. So, the things like this. Things like this and these crates. Exactly. This is the mission. This is the mission. And the houses and trees, that's sandbox, right? Yes. All right. So, and uh, first off, you start with the sandbox and then you fill up the mission. Yes, we're going to start with a uh, sandbox. 
and actually play it without the mission props. Mm -hmm. and, also, and if it proved to be good, mm -hmm. then we're gonna fill up the gaps and uh, adjust the metrics with the level design phase. Mm -hmm. Not everything uh, is wrong in sandbox, mm -hmm. but sometimes it's easy to fix in level design. Mm -hmm. All right, all right, cool. And so these are the trees, right? Yes, these are the trees, the most amazing landmark in Kansan. Yeah, I like that because you can see them from far away and it's uh, easy to navigate. So, uh, I remember you started with the trees and then uh, I think we were working around the, the center and then the outskirts, right? Yes, we started with trees and then the s close surroundings and we designed it according to link scenario. Mm -hmm. And when that proved to be alright, we continued to expand into surroundings to make a clash location. Mm -hmm. And uh, isn't it a bit hard that you have the two scenarios on the same location? Like, isn't that limiting somehow? Well, in the first try, yes, it can be limiting, but after a while you get used to it. It's not that hard as it seems. Uh, the link is in the center of the village, while the clash is much bigger and mostly around the village. Of course, there is a point in the middle, in the area Air of the link lead. scenario, yeah. but still it's not that hard to make thanks to the level design phase and mission props. All right, all right. And what about these? These are actually sandbags we got especially for Argo, Project Argo. Yeah. And they are for blocking windows. So uh, why did we do that? Do you remember that? Enemy uh, we did to block uh, certain camp spots, Stand because ready. originally when we didn't have them, we tried to fix this this in a sandbox mm -hmm. by removing uh, high houses and this kind of stuff. But later it proved to be not so sufficient mm -hmm. because we were destroying the heart of the villages. Yeah. So we started with level design and mission props to yeah. fix these kind of issues. Yeah, that was that was really a good idea, I think, because right now yeah, we have indeed. we have uh, the windows that you would or that you would camp at or you would snipe from. I mean, Task you, Jan. <laughs> so, uh, we had them blocked out and it worked out li really fine. Yeah, so it definitely helped. Yeah, it helped a lot. Objective. So, I'm r I remember we had some problems uh, with the with line of sight, so how is that handled? It's just blocking around with the trees and houses or is there anything more about it? Well, the first uh, is to block them with trees when, when possible. Mm -hmm. And later, for example, for some houses, as it was mentioned, it's blocked by uh, the sandbags or other kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But uh, the most important are the trees. So, for example, here I would see there is another point. Yes. So we block that out with, the, with some of the trees. Yes, so it's not visible from the outside, and our shell player has to move yep. closer to the point. If the trees weren't there, it would just be a long sh shooter mm -hmm. and sniper fest, and basically a lot of players will not enjoy that style of gameplay. Yeah, even some of our players in the team. <laughs> yes, <laughs> even me, for example. <laughs> no, you were the one sniping, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. But well, yeah, it's kind of fun, but <laughs> close battle battles are much better for me. Really? Yes. All right. So, uh, so let's talk about the specific points because this uh, this is a bit further away from the center of the canton. So, did you have to enlarge the location much, or it was it just natural that you? picked some buildings, just put them there and it somehow worked or is there any idea behind it? Like right now we're here, mm -hmm. so is there are some buildings you can see here and here. So these are the outskirts and the sandbox. And but but what about this? This is the center, so do you had to like change the the idea or was it Well at first we look into original Malden. Oh. And take in consideration that, for example, when you are right around now, in the original mountain there is forest as well, but 
for the surroundings of Kansan, we have to consider the gameplay because not all the points have must be in the forest. And actually, Ivan Buchtan helped a lot with this mm -hmm. because he had, had amazing ideas about the locations. Mm -hmm. And we decided to make a Kansan of like a farmland, also similar. So we put some farms. They are different in colors and kind of stuff. So, for example, this one is stylized to be uh, more ri richer. Mm -hmm. But, for example, uh, on the other side of the village, they are much, much poorer. poorer. All right. So, uh, and every village has this, right? The big idea is the farmland, this is industrial, this yes. is something else. Yes, every village has its own background, which we worked on. And So, what about your other locations? Like, uh, what did you work on? The I remember the, are choosing the next well, objective. for example, recently released at Airfield. Yeah. It's my location where actually I uh, took in inspiration by real locations. As I follow, for example, some uh, wars and conflict, mm -hmm. we took inspiration in Ukraine. Really? Yes. To be exact, in the Belbeck airfoil airfield mm -hmm. Enemy and multiple airfield and right. big uh, based on that, we decided how to continue with the work around that. Of course, uh, we had some limits, but so not everything was possible, but I think we achieved a very nice location. Yeah, definitely. And uh, and the Leopard is yours, right? That was the first location ever to be released under Project Argo. It was very well received, you know that. I know that. And uh, it would be shame not to thank uh, to another developer, uh, Patrick Mateisley, who originally made the report link. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I listened to his ideas as well. So uh, I remember uh, Leport. So after we released report Leport, we uh, we gathered some data. Did you make some changes after that? Well, for example, the lighthouse. Yeah. Near the uh, sea proved to be really OP location, so we decided to block it based on our analytics. Mm -hmm. There were too many kills t t for the FOB base, which was nearby. So in the today's update, the lighthouse is blocked, mm -hmm. and no long and players no lo can no longer enter. So it's not accessible yes. at all. At all. All right. Cool. So were any changes to Kanson as well? Because right now we're in Kansan, so I can imagine not because it was pretty well balanced location, in my opinion. Well, it was pretty balanced, but even there, uh, some articles were shown and proved that uh, there are s certain line of sight which were needed to block mainly the houses. For example, are we in that area right now? We are not in that area right now. <laughs> right. It was mainly around the Bases, uh -huh. where our, our data showed that a lot of players had problem to get in the bases and died on the way to ah, them. Right, so it was so hard we had to get to there. Yes, sure. so we had to add some cover, block some windows. Like this one? This was already <laughs> in the game <laughs> a few weeks ago. <laughs> I'm just joking. So what about that There's a guy there. So we will prob probably lose. Why? Somebody Wait. took it? Yes. Oh. oh. I killed him! Nice. But I died. That's well. Anyway. Uh, so what about the smoke? Is that a mission Our prop? That's a mission prop. We actually added some smokes to improve the... Um, uh, feeling for yeah. the players and also it can serve as a objective. landmark for the players yeah, so definitely. they can go around the smoke can, and can tell the fr your, their friends they are near the smoke. Alright. Uh, if we lose, we will lose the whole Get ready. thing. Enemies so are approaching. I hope not. that's not going to happen. So... Uh, one more thing I wanted to mention. Because uh, I remember that there, uh, when we were talking about the line of sights, you know, uh, do you think you can cover all the line of sights 
that the player can find or did, do they surprise you actually? Well, some of the line of sight actually surprised me a lot. For example, in the Laporte, a lot of players climb from the hill. Which, for example, in, uh, in the Clash, mm -hmm. we somehow expected. But in the Link, it was unexpected, unexpected. So we had to change some of the line of sights. Mm -hmm. But I think players will still be motivated to go there and try it. And they will definitely find a spot that's more valuable and it's impossible to block all of these but we can at least try to block the most visible ones sure sure but the the met, uh, the analytics will show that yes the analytics will show that we are constantly following them gathering the data and improve our locations okay so no nope denied so the, don't you think uh, some of the areas are, are a bit cluttered? Oh, is that a problem? What do you think? In your own opinion, I mean, forget about everything, and you mean I mean the bushes and everything. You know, sometimes I think it's pretty easy to hide. Well, for example, on the, on the right side, as we are watching here, mm -hmm. there's a lot of bushes, but they also serve as a cover for the attackers. Mm -hmm. So, so when they, they have approach. yes. Right. So that it's uh, the point of them to have them there, but of course it can feel cluttered. And I'm armor player as well, so uh, it feels sometimes too much cluttered. Mm -hmm. But we need to focus on the uh, PvP gameplay, and they serve its purpose. All right. To cover the players to get to the point. Oh, they killed each other. Fine. Uh, <laughs> maybe we're not going to lose. Okay, uh, I wanted to mention easier. one thing. Uh, today, again, we are playing with my friends from the Nick server, like we did last time. So they serve as a as a target, but I think I'm the easy target here. But it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So uh, thanks to them for preparing this with us. Oh, Good, we won. Yeah, cool. I told them, mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's good. Uh, anyway, so thanks to my friends. No, they are not BI devs. <laughs> All <laughs> of them are just casual players. So <coughs> right now we're going to attack Delta. This was, uh, I think, uh, one it of the more or less used points. I can't remember. This was one of the u more used points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Players yeah. actually choose the bottom way, yeah. the more urbanized area. Because it's easier. It's probably much easier to read. I didn't pick up the forest way. Which mm -hmm. actually took me by surprise because I actually more like the forest way, more the forest way. Mm -hmm. And in the Arab internal playtest, it showed to be the better way. The bottom way actually was reworked. The points were moved a little bit, so the time balance will fit. Mm -hmm. Actually, and probably good work done there. Mm -hmm. And why do you like the first way? Like uh, is I, uh, I'm the type of player I like to flank. <laughs> All right. So All right. I yeah. flank and spend five minutes just flanking without killing anybody. So there's the first question that's uh, that's probably for me. Are y'all ever gonna add anything like the Enhasma movement mod for Arma 3? No is the answer. Mm -hmm. We already answered this the last time and the time before. There will be no enhanced movement mod like that. So as for the questions, you can also obviously ask questions as usual. Just some of them expect answers that you won't like. So what about these buildings, the the ruins? Do you add them as ruins or do you destroy them after the mission start? How does that work? Uh, the destroyed buildings has, have they each model, so so it's a separate it's a separate model, model and right. we add them in the sandbox, so they yeah. stay and yeah. in modern. And you'll see they will be there as well. It's, it might be a stupid question, but do you actually think about where to put the destroyed building, or is it just, uh, uh, it might be nice here, or...? 
uh, we think about it definitely. For example, this destroyer building uh, is placed on the outskirts of the canton to look. <laughs> 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 Mom, I'm on TV. All right. <laughs> Great, guys. Thank you all. <laughs> okay, continue. So we add uh, some trees around it to feel like a abandoned kind of place. Mm -hmm. So def we definitely think about that all as right. well. So we might capture this. Oh, or not. We're gonna well, lose. you try it. Uh, there is some guy who has a problem with the stream, right? Uh, one second. Uh, updated over correction. Okay, playing over correction. Okay. Uh, I don't know what to do with it. I'm sorry. And then what? we can see this is exactly the type of player that climbs on the Laporte Hill. What? He's like 200 meters away. Okay, I guess that's that's valid. Do you think he can make it back? Like, fast enough? Oh, do you actually think about these players? Because I know I'm doing it. Well, we try to think them about as well, of course. But it's hard to actually manage to all uh, to all pairs to fit the location to everybody. Mm -hmm. So f we have a different kind of location. For example, you we had uh, Saint Mary yeah, which for the second round. Yeah, which we are is going to talk about it later. But which is yeah. better for the snipers? Yes. <laughs> and in the report or the airfield, it's more the urban area and close quarter combat. Yeah. Right. So That's ev true. every player can find his own map, which he enjoys and is good at. Well, Sand Mary was made by a sniper. Yes. So, <laughs> so he made it for the snipers. All right. Please win. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's one on one. <laughs> is it? Yeah, it is. Please win. Please win. All right. Uh, but as you can see, the delta is a uh, used point uh, again and again, and mm -hmm. I think it will stay that way. Because, uh, as you said, I think it's easier for the players to navigate in that area. And especially from the other side, it's easier to get there, I think. Mm -hmm. Oh, we won. We won. Great. Nice. So, well, let's choose another location. You tell me which one I'm going Select to choose. Well, we can pick up the golf. All right. So it's a nice white uh, yellow compound. Yeah. So Cyrus. All right. Let's go. So I'm gonna take the flank route. Yeah, take the, the flank hill. route up the hill. There is nice uh, small compound where you can snipe from. All right. You show me. Probably the guys already know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they know. They got a thousand hours in this game. So. They're crazy. We might. Oh! It wasn't me. I'm horrible at playing with Cyrus. I, didn't, I don't know why did I pick it up. <laughs> to show us the surroundings. <laughs> and actually, you can play a sniper even in this map. Oh, see, see that one? Oh. Mm. So where's this compound? Uh, this right one? Right in front of you. This one? Yes. All right. And if you go to the long building in front of you. The long house? Yes. There's a spot. And on the, lef on the left side. <laughs> There's your spot, right? Yeah, that's my spot. <laughs> All right. On the left side, you have oh, a window here. Oh, I see. Oh. Actually isn't pretty this nice overview. Isn't this too OP? You might want to block it. I don't think it's OP. You don't see the whole point. You yeah, see some of the parts of it. That's true. And if somebody hides behind the track, you have to run all the way to the point. Yeah, that's true. And it's a bit further It's a bit away. further away. Yeah. So you might not, not make it in time. So we have another question, as I can see. So what made you put the S-Star in the last map and what do you think of that gun? Well, I love the S-Star. <laughs> yeah, I love it too. So you, you explain why you love it. It's a pretty good gun. Yeah, it's a pretty good gun. 
I feel like it's a very accurate comparing to other guns. Yeah, and it has a very nice sound. Yeah, good rate of fire. It's pretty weak, but overall, I think it's pretty good. Well, I don't think it's weak at all. But well, okay. it depends what you hit. But yeah, but weapon. considering the the ammo used, it might be a bit weak. Oh, and by the way, today Toki is not con um, conversing with you, with you all on the stream. Today we got Lucky. Yay for Lucky. It's the dude that was here the last time. The, the weapons guy. So he can explain what made him put the S-Star into the last map because it was his decision. And right. we actually might win this again. Yeah, we should. Uh, we should. Time limit for the passage we should. Up. Where's the last guy? Oh. Nice. Yay! Uh, I love it too. And people ask me why I use double. To the be honest, I felt like character had more armor. Does armor coming to effect with certain choices? Yes, it does. Big idea. Actually. Actually, uh, right now in the loadouts, it's made that way that the 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 smaller smaller guns, let's say, have bigger armor and vice versa. So if I pick Katiba, I should have the heavy vest. Yes, I do. Oh, barefooted. <laughs> So in t yeah, you might know, you might not notice that, but uh, in today's update, there's uh, the apparel screen where you can select what you're going to wear. It doesn't affect anything; it's just pure visual. So if you have the helmet, it doesn't mean that you're bulletproof or something like that, or headshot proof. Oh, nice! No, okay. that wasn't nice. He was doing it on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, India. <laughs> that was. Uh, this is one of the bases. Uh, I'm gonna. S I'm not going. Uh, to actually, proving that it's hard to attack. Yeah, it is. But that's. But uh, what is it? That's the base about. Uh, it should be harder than other points. Let's see the map. Yeah, I remember going this far mm -hmm. to get there. That's my favorite uh, way as well. And, and this far. I I think there are some uh, some trucks here, yes. right? So th block this is the this is the approach route. And actually, it's much harder to attack from golf if you don't capture the hotel because they can go in your back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Well, I wasn't the, this small house somewhere around here before. I don't think so. No, because I remember where long time ago when we were building this location mm -hmm. uh, just when you started i remember i've been killing ivan from this <laughs> <laughs> from this well point. there is a wreck a tank wreck oh yeah that that's location true. yeah the area. yeah he's actually pretty close that's the wreck i think and there's another one there should be another one somewhere close to it yeah, but this is the flanking. I what like. about the surroundings? Do you actually do all the surroundings, or we have another guy that does that? Uh, we started doing that, mm -hmm. uh, but we also have uh, another guy working on the surroundings. Ondra, right? Uh, that's Ondra, and he's basically doing just the surroundings. He's not doing any playable location mm -hmm. or any stuff like that. That's up and three guys here, mm -hmm. which will be. Be shown later as well. Okay, so uh, even if we win or lose this one, this is going to be the end of the clash. So, um, where for you guys on this watching the stream, uh, we're going to take a short break. Uh, we're gonna switch up the hosts, and we will get back to you. It will be about two minutes. You can watch the video there. It's uh, made uh, on a quick notice by our friend Dubas, who is playing with us today. So enjoy that. So let's see if we will win or lose. It well, might it's still take doable. a while. 
Yeah, it is still doable. I know you can do it. One versus three. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, what's the closest village to Kansan, actually? Uh, the closest village? Probably Shapoa. That's right behind the... On the other ah, side right. of the forest. Yeah. And Larivera. Uh, Lari yeah. It's and much Seth. further because there is no direct road, but... St. Mary here. We will be talking about this one today. And La Trinita, right? La Trinita. That's up to north on the right. This one? Yes. Oh. The biggest city. That's the biggest? Yes. It's, right. the, it's the capital of Malden. I didn't know. Shame on me. I really didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> Is he actually going to win this? Oh. I'm not sure what they're doing, but... <laughs> <laughs> All right. So one versus two. And, and the chances are even higher. Yeah, right now. Oh. oh. We might actually win. That would be awesome. So, uh, I remember we tried to use some of these locations, but not here, but on the on the other uh, in Leport, right? Because we've got another Leport. We got another Leport. Yeah. As well. Players don't know that, but uh, they might suspect, right? We we might oh. hint it. Yeah, they might suspect. <laughs> <laughs> so there's uh, another Leport. We call it Leport North. North. Right? So it's another clash for you. It will be up next year. Because right now, after this Christmas update with all the locations released, we will uh, not going to no do another update up until January 11th, I think. So yeah, I think that's the day. And then we will going to add the locations, so there are not there is not going to be any switches, and the updates will be in two weeks, not in one week, because we felt it's too fast. But it helped us a lot because the the analytics we got from the from it was pretty clean. Yeah, it definitely was pretty clean and very helpful for us to improve the locations. But it, for the players, it was too fast. At least I think so. So win or lose already. He's actually enjoying it. <laughs> I think he wants to win. Well, he got this far. There's but the right now on the cross combos battle, With the, the rifle siren. is not yeah, the, the best option. Take a pistol. <laughs> Grenade. Probably. We have no sound. Again. Come on, you can do it. He can do it. He stopped the, the clock. Mm -hmm. So for, th for those who don't know how this works, if you, in the, l if in the last minute you get into the, the, the zone, you can actually stop the timer and capture the point. It was le uh, it was added late in the development because we felt it was unfair to yeah. capture the point. Because when you're alone and there there's three or four of them waiting for you, you have no chance. They can just camp camp it out and wait. Oh. Uh, he will actually win. So I will answer this question. All Yay! Nice. Time to leave the nice. So, after the pause, I will answer the question. Now, short break. So, stay with us, guys. And thanks, Dev, for coming. Yeah, thanks for watching.
And we're back. Yes, with a new face. Yes, that's Hedrick. Right yeah, I'm Hedrick. I'm also level designer on Argo. Yes, you are. And yeah. you are the fresh one. Yeah, I'm the new guy. <laughs> the newest guy, at least. Yeah, the new guy. Yeah. The FNG. Yeah. So, is this your location? Originally not? No. Originally it was made by, uh, by Jan. Yeah. And the uh, sandbox location is kind of Yvonne's baby. <laughs> for the ones of you that, that watched earlier, uh, earlier streams, that know that it's uh, Ivan is the, the father of Malden, and La Trinité is of course one of the the bigger parts of it, mm -hmm. and he really sees it as his little little baby. So uh, he made the original outline for it. Jan worked on the on the sandbox, made the original design for it. Mm -hmm. We uh, we found some issues during our internal playtest, so I put the finishing touches on it together with Jan. We uh, we had a set together, mm -hmm. and I put it all in. All right. Hey, AK-12, AK I'm yeah, going for it. That's, that's definitely my favorite. Yeah, I know that. Yeah, put the two-run burst. <laughs> Otherwise, you're not worthy of the AK-12. So, uh, what was the big idea behind it? The well, the La Trinité, as told to me by Jan, who is from Belgium, so he knows French. It stands for the Holy <laughs> Trinity of Three Churches. So, uh, of course, it has three churches, so it, it revolves around it. It's the largest city. Um, it's the largest city on Malden, so we, we, of course, it had to be urban. Uh, but the, the challenge with it is that it's urban, it's a city, you need to keep variety. Otherwise, you get the problem that it's just another street after another street after another street. <laughs> yeah. So, during the redesign, that was one of the, the big things that we worked on. Mm -hmm. So, hopefully, we managed to achieve that every point has its own identity now. I see that you're fighting over Delta now, which is the, the roadblock. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. It's actually one of the ones that I like the most. Really? So yeah, yeah. It, it really has a nice blend of military. It feels Arma, uh, which I think is a nice change compared to the other... Nice. You're Arma, Arma player originally, right? Yes, I, I started in Flashpoint. So oh. I also have a, have a connection with Molden. Okay. I, I like that we, that we went for Molden, and it's, uh, it's an honor to work on it. How so? How does it feel to work on uh, on a map some 15 years later? <laughs> it, of course, we have different assets, um, yeah. but originally Malden was based in the Mediterranean. It was so it, it's it was an easy step for me, and uh, the assets that we do have, I think, fits with the island. We can of course do a lot more cool new things. Um, we have a lot more different assets. We can make more beautiful surroundings, so I really like it. Yeah. It's it's a nice change, and I think it will add a lot to Arma. It will. Yeah, definitely. So right now we're at the at the gas station, Mal Evil. Yes. <laughs> 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 it's pretty funny. Yeah, actually, so to, to add on that is that with all the, the recognizable locations, of course, this is then the uh, checkpoint. Yeah. And uh, the gas station right next to it, really works well to to make calls from your team like when you're defending it you can say like they're coming from the gas station so it's easier to work together uh, plus that when you are navigating throughout the map you know where you're going you know that you're going to go through the gas station first then you're going to reach to the square and so on yeah so it, it it's it helps in in general level design so it's not just making a location with the points it's thinking it through in that sense foxtrot or echo foxtrot that's another one of my favorites all right so I remember we had some problems <laughs> with this location. We already talked about it in one of the previous streams. Yeah. But uh, originally the points were like this, right? So this was one of the bases, and yeah. there was the other one. It, re it really stood out. Yep. That was a really good part, but metrics-wise, unfortunately, it didn't work. Yep. So right now it's it still has its place right next to the, to the checkpoint, mm -hmm. which I think works. You can still look at it. Yeah, it does. Um, yeah, so I it's gotten a slight bit smaller than what it was like before. Um, I think that helped quite a bit in terms of travel times. Yeah. So, landmark. Yes. It's it's a thing that I wanted to have in there. <laughs> yeah. It, it's obvious, but it it, it, it looks cool. Come yeah, on. it does definitely. I like that one because I I I. L I l Definitely, usually I, uh, well, what well, they're already on the point. Yeah, they are, but it doesn't matter. I like to lurk around this side. 
and get there. Easy. You should have the advantage now. Maybe. You have grenades, you can... Yeah, I know. Yeah. Oh! Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> totally not my fault. All right. It wasn't me. Anyway. Uh, so, what you... Uh, I remember we switched the points, that was one thing. Then we... We had a, a different diagram of the mission, right? We had like something like 12 points or something like that, I think. It uh, got a lot smaller. Points got really close together, yes. yeah. Yeah. And uh, we added the vineyards and stuff like that. And right now we're fighting over Echo, which is my favorite, actually, because it's the center, right? Yeah. And it's it there's was the market. And it, was it was one of the most problem oh, one of the most problematic ones. Yeah. Uh, it's in a little square, so it's really open, so we needed to narrow that down. Uh, plus, it didn't have, in my opinion, enough soul yet. Mm -hmm. So we um, we added a little market there. So it, it makes sense within the, the place as well. Definitely. It's something that you want to fight over. Um, and plus, next to that, a lot of the windows, we, we just narrowed it down. So players kind of just camp in windows and then go for it, plus the little market itself on the point gives a lot more cover. So how did we achieve that, the narrowing? Well, uh, a lot of the buildings are around. Uh, one of the things that we could, for example, do is just put sandbags all around it. Yes. But that doesn't really help with the recognizability. So what we did was um, add crates behind windows, so at least you can see that they cannot get in there. Mm -hmm. So just block off, there was a guy next to you, to the left. Yeah, he crossed. Really? So yeah, one of th that was one of the things that we did. Yeah. Uh, of course, we don't want bl want to block all the windows. That would just be plain unrealistic. Yeah. Um, so the way that you can counter then the fact that the some people can still look on the point is that here we use the the little roofs. They're mostly blocking concealment. Mm -hmm. Of course, there are the cars that give you some hard cover, but this blocks a lot of views from the surrounding windows. Mm -hmm. So that's a way that we balance that out. So yeah, this we actually went from. One of your least favorite points, one of your most favorite points, I take it? This, this is one of my favorite points because I just love markets in the... That was my guy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no one markets in, in every game, I just need my market there <laughs> because <laughs> it's... Uh, score, some, score some good deals as yes. well. I don't know. I, th I, I, just, I just love it. So let me answer that questions I've been talking about. So with Malden, we can see that maps created based on gameplay by opposition to maps created based on reality are nice and realistic. Do you think it's still relevant for this to try to copy real places such as Lemnos Altis for future games? Could maps based on gameplay and devs expectation be better than maps based on reality? Well, that's a hard one. And that's actually a question I think for Ivan, but you can try. I can definitely try. <laughs> um, actually, the original Malden was based on a realistic island that exists. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's in Croatia. Somewhere. Yeah, it's a lot bigger, so it's narrowed down, but the terrain is still pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. um, I think we can definitely still draw inspiration from it. You, Arma has always been authentic, yeah. and we want it to be a realistic. Mm -hmm. uh, with Argo, of course, we make some concessions for gameplay, mm -hmm. which I personally think is a good thing. And the fact that you now respond that it still looks realistic is only encouraging that. Um, of course, it requires a lot more effort per square kilometer. Um, I think we can achieve that. So yes, it's something that we would have to look into. Definitely also for, for the future. Yeah, we can try. Um, but yeah, of course, there, there have to be concessions. So for Arma, the realistic feel really works. Uh, we have yet to try Malden properly with Arma, so I cannot really comment on that. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, it would definitely be an interesting move to go into. Yeah, it's a nice idea, definitely. Yeah. So I'm going to try to answer the, the question, what is the aim of this project? Do you want to create competitive games like CSGO, for example? Well. Uh, we've already talked about this before, but yet again, I don't mind. <laughs> so Project Argo right now is in state of prototype. It's a public prototype and we're trying to make, um, I wouldn't say 
competitive per se, but we want it to be competitive, but we also want it to be authentic, that you have the feel that you are fighting, you're in, in, a, in a small combat zone, five versus five, and we definitely want it to be tactical, so we need, to, we need players and we want players to think about what they do. So uh, that's actually why Link is the only one that has respawn. So right now in Clash and Raid, you have only one life, so you need to try hard. And as we said earlier in January, they'll, they'll, there will be a hardcore mode without all the helpers on the screen. The damage will stay the same, so it's not like hardcore mode in Battlefield or something like that. We w because we want players to learn in the so-called normal mode and then go into hardcore and have a different perspective, different experience, much more immersive and stuff like that. So it's not going to be CSGO because that's not how Bohemia works and that's not what I want would want would want to work on uh, because I really like the challenge of trying to create a competitive tactical immersive authentic game it's it's really a challenge it's something that's not done anywhere I would say right now so you also don't really want it to be a CSGO clone you want it to have its own identity of course yeah and uh, another one will project Argo also lift from the ride from a 364 version development that is uh, discussed right now, so work in progress. So, what next? Let's see what they pick. Charlie! Right. That's going to be fun. I'm going to spawn on the Alpha and show the vineyards. Yes. Because li I love them. That's really something for uh, La Trinité, the vineyards. It's identical to the, to the area. And uh, actually, I think we 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 found out that it works like a like a guide to the player. Yes. So you can guide them around, and that's w I think Jan was explaining this to me, that you can use vineyards as guidances. Yeah. If you put them with the players, they start using it. If you use it as a blocker, they actually don't use it as often. Mm -hmm. They can still use it, but in within the data, it actually shows that. They try to avoid it, mm -hmm. so you can really use it in gameplay, which I like. Mm -hmm. Plus the the path that you just used down, mm -hmm. uh, it's also used for gameplay that we just made an opening up. So we, um, they are actually serving as a blocker, and then we uh, make a path, mm -hmm. so we can encourage players to go in that direction, mm -hmm. which I think really works well for that um, for that point. For others, it might not work. Uh, ooh, you're going up close. Mm -hmm. I know. I'm gonna die. He's interesting. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, he. It's he's. I don't know what okay. he's doing. So this is Charlie. This is supposed to be like a like a poor area. Yeah, it's quite poor. Um, it's inspired by farmland. So right next to it, you see a lot of farmland. So we in gave it the identity of more like a farm. Mm -hmm. There's also a little barn. So again, it stands out from the rest of the city where it's uh, more rich and you see all the colorful buildings. Mm -hmm. um, so in that sense, of course, there's also the combine harvester, which signifies that it's a farm. Yeah. Of course, it, we, we it still has names like Charlie, but anything can be given a military name and sure. And, sure. and serve. So um, there you go. No, we didn't. No, no. But you didn't die. No. <laughs> Thank you. So you were wrong about that. <laughs> All right. All right. So it's actually four versus three. Yeah, I know. Yeah, actually, it's it's quite interesting that they're not using this tactic. Um, one that we noticed in the office is Which that um, since they're the one attacking, mm -hmm. they don't rush this building. Oh. Since yeah. you can really rush this building and it's uh, hard to defend, so then you start fighting over this building, mm -hmm. which I personally like. I really I'm really bad. Uh, I know that. Too bad. Too bad. I'm sorry. Yeah. So that's what I find interesting now within this play. Mm -hmm. uh, we also had data suggesting that people really fall over those buildings. Uh -huh. 
So everyone agrees yeah, to no, see I that Yeah, I was going to happen. ask about the analytics if we if we change something after the after the first run of this location. Very little, actually. Yeah, I'm I'm really surprised by the the data that showed it. It showed a really nice curve of what we actually wanted to. Mm -hmm. I think it was the first location that did that out of the first batch that we released. Mm -hmm. Of course, it still needed some some tweaks. There were some line of sight issues that we that we wanted to address, which I think is only normal that that should happen. There's always going to be things that you don't expect. Mm -hmm. So thank you guys for showing that to us. Yeah, yeah. there is another question. I will try to specify. Do you aim for placing these projects uh, as portraits of fucking planks side by side? Uh, events like uh, like Overwatch achieved as new community. Okay, so there's the question about uh, us being next to CS:GO, League of Legends, and Overwatch. Well, that is uh, really hard to judge because uh, for us, even if we wanted to, uh, on this current tech, we I don't think we can achieve it. So maybe for the future. But right now, Project Argo is more about uh, being, as I said, tactical, immersive, and competitive in some sort of way. Because for the eSport title, we would need a pretty cool spectator mode. We would need to balance out everything and have the netcode worked out and stuff like that. Uh, and on the current tag, I'm not going to lie, it's pretty hard. So. I don't see Project Argo next to Overwatch. It may change, but we don't know. Plus, so we also really started out to get better at this kind yes. of game design. Yes, exactly. Because so. the the so-called level design on these kind of maps is really, really different to what is done in Overwatch and CS and stuff like that. So it's different. All right. Sorry, do you aim? Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Who would have kept it? Can he do it? I don't know, but they're pretty slow right now. Before they were fast, and right now they're taking kind of slow. That don't might matter. be about the level design, though. <laughs> don't matter. Let's get. Uh, I wanted to ask us something about the map. Because uh, I don't think I have ever played in India. India? Yeah. Because I. W what was on the analytics? I, I don't think I've ever played India. Maybe once. Um, I believe 6% of the matches were on Alpha and 5% were on India. Yeah, so, so that's pretty close. But um, it's a bit harder to get there, right? Defend the base Data shows no. <laughs> um, of course, Alpha is on top of the hill. So it's you might think it's harder to attack, but there's also more approaches that are covered up. Mm -hmm. uh, India is more open in that sense. So what we try to do is, of course, the there are still some vineyards around Alpha, but India is really within the vineyards. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a farm within the vineyards. So we actually find it quite interesting that you say that you've never played there. I think during the playtest, we played there quite a few times. No, I wasn't there. You should have been there, man. You should have yeah. been there. <laughs> I know, but I wasn't. So it yeah. don't matter. There were some interesting fights. Um, I don't think anything really problematic showed up. Um, people tend to go where we want them to go. Happy with that. <laughs> so we want people to play somehow. So you are yes. actually guiding them. Yes, we are guiding you guys. We're watching. <laughs> um, yeah, of course, we're only making suggestions. You can <laughs> go wherever you want if you want. You can just turn around and uh -huh. walk away. Um, but I think it's also our task to... Oh, that's... should take, take a screenshot. Take a screenshot. No. Okay. You do that. <laughs> <laughs> On your computer. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, not here. Yeah. So, um, of course, l level design is also about guiding players. Uh, if we don't guide, you yeah. guys will most likely get lost. Of course, there's the markers to help you out. Um, so, for example, here, if you look slightly to the left, yeah, you see that oh, there's, there's actually one using the guiding, and you got him, nice. So we are guiding players through uh, towards this location, mm -hmm. from the street through the little graveyard, and then there's a little path leading through the vineyard. Mm -hmm. 
it's highlighted as a path. Players use it as a path, so that's using as intended. Mm -hmm. Of course, there's also players going all around it, mm -hmm. which um, we anticipated for it. So, of course, it cannot be exploited, but we are not trying to encourage that. Okay. And I go. I have one question. Yes. Shoot. He he listened to me. He shot. What was the biggest challenge about this uh, whole location? I mean, besides the problems we had with the with the line of sights and the times and the travel times and everything, so what was, what do you think was the biggest challenge? I think I slightly touched upon that when we started. It's mostly yeah, no, but I yeah, yeah, but definitely because it is a city, the whole. Um, of course, cities are blocky, and blocky is a nightmare for navigation. So, of course, there was that to make realistic-looking paths throughout a city. Uh, and then there's, of course, the the whole landmark uh, bit that every bit needs its own um, identifiers. So, I think in in total, that worked towards each other. Mm -hmm. But it was definitely a challenge because otherwise it's going to be street, 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 street. Uh, of course, what's another challenge? Um, yeah, making areas identifiably different since we have a limited library of assets. Of course, it's also a blessing that we get to use ARM assets. Mm -hmm. It really sped up our production time. Yeah, but, but there's also a limited amount. Yeah, and so we had to re le uh, recolor some of the buildings. Yes, but it went out for the better. Uh, yeah, it did. Take, take golf? the risk. Uh, try golf. Hotel. We will have we thought of a hotel? Yeah. Okay. Let me take golf. Let's go, let's go golf. I'm going to pick this one. Yeah, I'll take that one. This is a beast. You like that weapon, don't you? Yeah, I do. I I do like the Your the underslung Capture weapon. The on this one. Yeah. Plus, it also has the full auto with the 6.5, which is really yeah. nice. So yeah, another little example here is the helicopter. Uh, it's it, 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 yeah, well, it, it works the same as the fuel station. It's another identifier. You can s you can say they're coming from the helicopter, so when mm -hmm. you're playing with a little group, you can use it. Uh, you can ping it, and you can see it in the distance. It's like, ah, they pinged the helicopter. It's not they pinged another tree. Mm -hmm. um, of course, here, there is to the left, there is a mansion. To the right, there is a forest, so you can also use that for identification. Yeah, it I helps with navigation. I like to run around, but I'm not going to do that right now. So well, someone well else did. Someone else did, and I, I might be <laughs> dead. As well, you've got... Cover. Is this even possible? Well, he's just a good shot like that. <laughs> no, no. He's just mm. lucky. There he is. Death is golden. You, go, you can get him. You can get him. Yes, nice. So yeah, this is one of those points where there was uh, problems with line of sight before arriving at the point. Yeah. Um, especially from the point that you were coming from, it was really open. Let's look at the map. Yeah, so it was really open. You can see the, the road leading from Delta to Golf and a f giant field next to it. This one. Yeah, and what tended to happen was that players had to go through the mansion that's slightly next to the dirt road. Mm -hmm. So what we tried to do was to open it up a bit. Yeah. Uh, and then place strategically place the cover like the trucks with the smoke. Uh, what we also tried to do was there is a limited amount of trucks. And to say there is the third truck where he's right next to, there is one with smoke. Mm -hmm. So you can say, like, yeah, he's behind the truck with the smoke. There is another identifier, the garden party. Yes. Or whatever that is. Yeah. Or he's coming from the vineyards. Yeah. So everything works as a, as a sort of landmark. Um, we, we had to use our limited assets in order to do that. Of course, if we had all the assets, we could say, like, yeah, we have a huge crash, crash site here of this C-130, and then people are fighting around that. But unfortunately, we cannot do that, so we're trying to use it different ways. Yeah, I think it works for the better. Uh, it's another thing of a designer to work with constraints. Mm -hmm. And the more constraints you have, the better ideas you can sometimes come up with. Yeah, that's, that's, tri that's yeah. true, actually. Because so if, you, if you have two open possibilities, you might end up with everything yeah. and then actually nothing. Yeah. Which it, it might it sound strange, but it's exactly like that. It, it will lack depth. Yes. And depth is good. Yes. 
So are we going to win or lose? I think we're going to lose. Place so your bets, people, in the chat. If we lose, so there is going to be another switch, so another short break, and then the last of my hosts will come. It will be Jan, the Belgium level designer. We mentioned him already, and we mentioned him in the previous streams, and we will be talking about Saint Marie. So he might have some really nice aspects on that. Yes. Because like we had really good feedback from you guys on that. Yeah, like it's a huge fucking forest and it can't be play in, played in. Now it can. <laughs> I really like the changes. Yeah, yeah with, I'm just joking. But there was a time where it was really hard. Yeah, but to me it felt really armor-like. Yes, like you were going two kilometers away and then you got headshot. Maybe, <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. So... I'm not sure what's going to happen here. Well, actually, if they win, then there's at least one more round. Yeah, I know. But, oh, sure. Three to four right now. Yeah, three to it's four. It's actually pretty even. I can't count. But it doesn't matter. Any more questions? Can you please elaborate on that? Point two Oh, you can answer this one. Will there be more vertically designed map areas? I would love to. Of course, we're limited by Armatech that a lot of the verticality has to come from terrain. Um, I think there are some in the works right now. Mm -hmm. Hint, hint. Hint, hint. Where we're trying to do something more like that. Um, you don't expect huge cliffs where you're fighting <laughs> yeah. on because that's unfortunately not possible. We were trying to use more height differences at the location that we showed so far. Well, actually, San Maria has quite a bit of height differences. Yeah, it does. It's quite vertical, but I don't think that's the kind of verticality that you're talking about. Um, so, yes, we're trying to work on that. There are ideas well, going we around. Well, the, the we can mention the village because they can just walk around the map and find it. So it's Huden, right? Who then it's gonna have more verticality yeah. than before. There are two actually cliffs or something like that. They're not huge, but they're there. And it's going to be interesting. Also there's my very first location, the raid, where I tried to include some yeah, verticality. There's the AA side, right? Yeah. 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 If uh, you wanna know more about that, there's gonna be a blog. Yeah, there's going to be a blog tomorrow. Uh I wanted to mention that. Thank you. Uh You're welcome. so tomorrow. All these three guys put up a nice blog about level design with pictures <laughs> and uh, actually with sketch of AA side, right? Yes. And you're, uh, the basically the blog is about how to become a level designer, how to do a level design location and yep. how to analyze uh, the data you get. Basically a kit how to get started. Mm -hmm. This is taking... Can he do it? Can he do it? That's a dead That's body. Yeah. Which ones are left? Oh. There. oh. Ah. 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. We should have missed... Oh. oh. So at least another one. Yes. And they are the ones attacking, so they can finish it now. Yeah. Uh, you talked uh, about the th the Holy Trinity, right? Yes. So it's this, this, and that, right? Yep, correct. So that's what La Trinité is about. We will see at least one because we're defending Alpha. Defend the base or we will lose so the let's let's see. That's the one right next. To this is there. the yeah. first one. That's the the Second other one. one. That's the biggest and one, actually. Yeah. And uh, where's the third one? On the left, right? Yeah, it's slightly to the left. I think you can see it from the hill. Yeah, there yeah. you can see the, the little tower. So this is the holy trinity of La Trinita. Yeah. So first, second, third. And in the hills you can see the vineyards. Yes. Right over there. The new special aspect of Malden. But it's, uh, Malden is supposed to be in the Mediterranean, yeah. so it kind of makes sense. So, so what is it called? Mal Maldenian? Maldenian. Mal Oh, well, uh, you, you got him as well. Yeah, okay. I got him. Fair enough. Uh, the end, 
if you didn't notice it, so there's the billboard contest. Ooh. So you can make your own billboard and you can uh, submit it to us and we will select the best and they will make it into the game. There have been some really nice submissions already, haven't there? Yeah. For example, Tanoa. <laughs> Tanoa? <laughs> yeah, Tanoa was uh, one of the submissions. Energy drinks? Yeah, energy drinks, that was a good one. Cars? I don't know about cars. There was one for the SUV. Really? Yeah. I need to see that one. But I like the one with the with the football rugby player, whatever that was. That was really that was energy drink. Yeah, I like that. Fortunately, we're not picking. <laughs> it's Ivan. Yeah, we are not. It's Ivan and and uh, and Monte. So yeah, the two angry ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So isn't it a bit weird to have a cemetery next to a vineyard? Airdrop has landed in the area. No. Do, do we actually pay attention to these kind of things? Yes, we do. That's also why we have Ivan. <laughs> <laughs> he really, well, he's really knowledgeable about these kind of things. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, there it's the cemetery that's on the outside of the village. Mm -hmm. It makes a lot more sense that if the city starts growing, that it's probably a good way to save some space. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's more on the outside uh, that there is a vineyard next to it. Yes, but I think that works out fine. Yeah, that's true. Ivan is guiding it. Yes. I, I know. He's got always uh, notes about uh, almost everything, but it's always for the good. Yes, it will only help make, help make it better. Yes, even if like he proposes ideas, sometimes it doesn't work, sometimes it works. But yeah. at least you know that something is wrong, so yeah, you yeah. can work on it. But I really maybe we could try the other one, the other clash as well, because I really like the base here, but it didn't work. Unfortunately. Ma How about we do a raid in there? Uh, yeah, we can. We can try cool. at least. Yeah. Because this is the football field. Yeah, we need to use it. We should. Yeah. It's or will it become a rock? Ooh. Nice. That was a bit of a noob tube there. <laughs> <no>? <laughs> yeah. yeah, we've ta already talked about it. <laughs> Last time about noob tubing. Yeah, however it does have a, an activation timer. So you cannot stand in front of someone and just shotgun them. Yeah. Which I think is a really good thing. Yes. But here we could technically just use that. Oh, <laughs> is he really that, that's doing filthy. this? <laughs> Unfortunately, this. we cannot fix this with level design. <laughs> I would love to just have some way to have two stairs. In some buildings we can fix it. <laughs> yeah, he's doing the MLG plays here. <laughs> He might win. Yeah. So just a quick lineup about level design. What you want to do is that whenever there is only one way, it's easy to camp. So you want to have at least two, mm -hmm. at least. And unfortunately, in this asset, there is only one way, and we cannot fix it. Also, the windows, they have bars. So we cannot artificially make another way in. Yes, unfortunately. So this is one of those things that we would love to fix, but we unfortunately cannot. He's out of grenades now, though. Well, he should he should actually lose because it's two against one. They just need to team up, not come one at a time. <laughs> and he's nearly out of health. He he cannot win this. <laughs> well, he can. I know this guy. He can actually win this. But I, I'm not sure what is, what was he doing, like. Not true. We're getting some suggestions. Could add an anti camp trigger that would cause players to show up on the map while camping out one area for more than center time. Yes, I was considering this. Uh, the anti camp mechanic, it's uh, actually a good idea. What we added, though, was uh, <laughs> really uh, was the revealing of the points. So, because what, what happened before was Basically, players would go around and attack you from the back where you wouldn't expect them. He actually won, by the he way. He actually won. Oh my god. So, we might end this without... without actually... Go for and tell. It's one that we haven't seen yet. Yeah. And I think, I hope... Well, if you win, 
you win. Yeah, no. 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 no pressure. No pressure. If I win, we will not win. Yes, you will, will. Because be six. you also get the construction oh, side. We, yeah. Okay. So let's do this. We're, we're getting a bit out of time here, but I think that's no problem. As long as you guys keep liking it, then we will just keep going, right? Damages are too extreme. Damages from what? Grenades. I don't know. I'm specific not sure. guns. Would be good to know. Falling. There's a lot of different kind of damage. Yeah, uh, you could you could uh, actually explain the mechanic about capturing the points that are not connected and stuff like that. Yeah. So we have a layout as you can see here on the map, and as so as long as you have one point next to it, you can fight for specific points. So now we only have Echo, but that's why we can fight for Hotel. If we win that, we cut off Foxtrot and Charlie from their main base. So we automatically capture those, and we get the capture points for that as well. So if we had zero points, now we have four, but if we had zero points and we would capture Hotel, we would instantly jump to six points. So that's also a way of a comeback mechanic. Yes, and it's also a sort of a strategic element that you want to consider if you're picking up the points, so it's not always one go one, goes the second, and stuff like that, but you can take the risk and uh, win. Risk so reward. Risk reward, yeah. Usual, easy as that. It's really satisfying if you manage to do it. It is. It's not like Dark Souls, though. Almost. <laughs> Almost. I think we're getting close to Nice. Yeah, I have to get rid of the reload. <laughs> it's... It's a bad habit from other games. Reload, so uh, reload after every shot. <laughs> <laughs> so again, we have the, the recognizability here. Mm -hmm. uh, you capture the point, which is in the courtyard. There's a helicopter, then uh, at this time a CSAT helicopter behind it. B where? The other side of the building. Here? To the left. There it is. You oh, see behind the tree. The tree. Yeah. All right. So if people are flanking, you right can there, call right it out. There. <laughs> You you want to see the helicopter now, don't you? Yeah, I want yeah. to see the helicopter. Then I won't spoil it. Which one it is? Oh, this one. Yes, that's another beast. It's a really cool model, though. See, it's yeah. working. Go to the helicopter, and you're dead. Yeah. <laughs> he probably called it out. He's at the helicopter. <laughs> yeah, he might have. Yeah. Dead body. It's the same guy again, isn't it? It is. Uh, from the from, from the, the previous, previous round. No. no, it's a different guy. Enemy yeah. forces acquired the airdrop. But he was last survivor. Mm -hmm. At least two rounds, uh, I think. Yeah, uh, in one of the previous rounds, he was he was the last survivor. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he's using the AK-12. That's your favorite gun. Yes. You already said that. But it's I like every gun with burst. Attack failed. Regroup. Hey, we're back, hopefully. I hope we can see and hear Esner right now. So let's check it out. And we're here with Jan. Yes. Hello, Jan. Hi, hi. So we're sorry about the technical issues. And right now we're in your location. Yes. Not the first one. Uh, I think it was the third one that I worked on. Yes. So a couple of months after I arrived. Yeah, so what was the big idea behind it? Uh, well, originally in Operation, the Operation Flashpoint Malden um, version at least, this was just a generated forest. Um, so it's gone through a bunch of changes. It's not only a forest anymore, because obviously that would not have been the most interesting uh, approach. That's true. Uh, but it went from extremely open, like. <laughs> People thinking that this is the open version. <laughs> it's definitely not. Um, to somewhat um, denser areas. Uh, it's got quite some natural dynamics and flow integrated in this area. Um, we've done this via farmland. Um, and then in slight combination with uh, some more urbanized areas. We've mm -hmm. got two, three farms, a construction site, and then sent many village itself but most of it is um, in the nature so 
that definitely had its uh, its own challenges. Um, but I think overall we we tackled them quite okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was definitely for a second week run, or well, third week run. Yeah. It was a second location in the running. I th I don't think that the the difference in environment could have been any bigger. Mm -hmm. All right. So maybe put your mic a bit closer. Yeah, thank you. All right. Uh, so uh, we had some challenges with this. Yes. You have your fun club there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm. Uh, <laughs> My fan base with me apparently. <laughs> All right, so we had some challenges with lo with this location, but I think we tackled them pretty well. Uh, I really love this location because it it's not so urbanized. It's not village here and the street here, street there. So I like that it's basically a forest with some points to capture. Yes, definitely. Um. That was unfortunate. Yes. Um, so yeah, we also this was this is a location like I said it was my third one um, throughout the you know from start to what has been released uh, last month. Mm -hmm. It's gone through a, a bunch of iterations. Um, we didn't touch it for a long time because we was working on yep. the other ones, but then coming back to it obviously after a couple of months of experience. Mm -hmm. We started to learn things that worked, didn't work. Um, Try to apply them in an area which is rather unique, mm -hmm. but it's uh, it's working all right. All right. So, did you actually start with the location and you did a clash there, or did you start with the link? Uh, if I remember correctly, start off with the link. Yeah, I think so. We had a. I think the first approach was even without ter like just terrain only, and then we just started building it up. From yep. harder terrain, like terrain differences, relief. We then start adding rocks, foliage, and um, we tried to keep it as clean as possible. Which I think some <laughs> somewhere along the line that we diverted from it, um, but it was necessary because um, given that link was situated in the middle of the valley and mm. without the uh, timers or anything, players were allowed to go wherever they wanted to. So. The height difference definitely, or the the height, yeah, the difference in height definitely allowed players to find very advantageous positions. So well while play for testing, for example, the base. Yeah, for clash that was definitely <laughs> uh, one of the issues. But for link, it was just the the the, the area right next to it, just steep hills or steeper hills. That's true. Back then there was no there were no ferros or tree lines to actually block the line of sight. So. It's quite the the camp fest. Mm -hmm. So I think they're attacking. What was it? What? We're attacking Delta. Actually. This is uh, one of the locations. I think if you fire up the map, that has gone through some changes, uh, especially for the approach route coming from Bravo. Mm -hmm. um, again. So it's the small far farm yes. away from the location. What right? we noticed out of the date of the out of the analytics was that it was. Um, not used as much as the other ones. Like um, a lot of people enjoyed the locations, which are now called Fox Dot and Charlie, and Delta and Bravo were a little bit left out. So we started to dig into why this was happening. Mm -hmm. um, we noticed that the, there were some advantageous line of sights for when you were coming from Charlie to Bravo, uh, mm -hmm. which was not ideal. Mm -hmm. And there was a because of the unurbanized areas. It's a uh, it's a lot trickier to guide players in the right direction. Um, so because of the experiences that we gathered with uh, playing around with vineyards in locations like uh, La Trinité and such, they finally only now, s so players that played it three weeks ago, um, and then look at it back now, you should notice that vineyards made their way into this location as well. Um, because of its it, its uses, it's, it's so easy and so subtle to guide um, players relatively safely towards objectives. Mm -hmm. um, so s we've implemented them in uh, St. Marie on two, two areas that turned out to be problematic. Um, hopefully we'll get to, I think it's called Alpha right now, at one point. So we should be able to see them. 
We're attacking Charlie, by the way. Mm -hmm. It's a really hard point. There's uh, the crane again, but it's a really nice like the first, landmark. The first time it was not blocked off, so players did indeed <laughs> try and get up there uh, with mixed results. Um, but yeah, now it's... How so? A, a, well, if you were to be able to get on top without being noticed, because it, it's climbing up ladders in Arma or Argo <laughs> takes ages. But if you manage to get up there safely, it was um, hard to get you. Oh, yeah. Basically. And you had a, a beautiful view on basically any approach route. So yeah, as a landmark, it definitely stood out and it helps players find their way. Nice. It definitely helps players find their way to the objective, but... It had to be blocked off for um, line of sight issues. Airdrop has landed in the air. There is a question, so am I going to... I was wondering how far you guys are willing to go with the fatigue mechanic, as I think it does a good job at penalizing reckless movement and keeping player customization in check by making players actually think oh well, how much of their load they are willing to carry before losing combat. Uh, yeah, ah. Uh, That's quite a lot. Uh, yes, uh, it does sound like an Arma 3 player. <laughs> uh, it actually is, maybe. Hope so. It's looks like it. Yeah, he is. Uh, anyway, uh, so fatigue is not the right way of saying what we have right now in Project Argo. What I like to call it uh, is more of a, of a sprint mechanic. So it does only limit your sprint it doesn't limit your aim it doesn't build up any any weapon sway and stuff like that so we cut that off because it was too complicated mechanic to figure out for the new players mm. so we'll see how wha what will happen with Actually that yeah i know this was an interesting no it was quite interesting um because that was one of the subtle things that i tried to achieve in the yes. map was the person was running away from the objective and he was following a tree line and at one point we didn't want players to actually continue mm -hmm. so we just put a farm uh, put a agricultural area there so it's just plain it's just grass there's nothing to cover you um in the hope that this would demotivate uh, demotivate players to actually cross it um risking that obviously it could easily get shot that nothing to hide behind mm -hmm. and it this this person apparently took it the right way so that was nice to see Good. I guess we will win. Five it against one. Looks like it. <laughs> well, the reinforcements definitely helped. What about those hills? Isn't that dangerous? Uh, well, here's the thing. If you look around, um, you okay. can see that there. By the time one, well, by the time you get there, the timers run down quite a lot mm -hmm. in that area, and it's ridiculously open to get to those. Uh, like. To get there, you'd be spotted so easily, and there's nothing for you to hide behind. There's some bushes that can conceal you, but yeah. you can shoot through them, or at least through the leaves. But it would be nice to to get there, you know. And again, by the time you like, by the time you make your way up there, um, and even if you do, there's still a lot of uh, concealment around these areas, so players should still be safe even if you make your way up there. We're taking them by a surprise. I see. Mm. We're winning pretty hard. But anyway, so what uh, New what I wanted to ask? Mm -hmm. I wanted to ask something, something about the bases, but I forgot. So can you talk about some of the bases? Um, so the bases, and I call them outposts, yeah. um, are in, in most of the locations that I've worked on are the only ones where you would see military activity. Like the neutral points overall, I try to limit the amount of just military objects, sandbags, tanks, and anything that um, could um, could highlight or could in, in what's the word here could make players believe that this was already captured before. Like mm -hmm. that was not the yeah. case. Like, it, it's neutral, so you're the, you're here. It's been here. The, you've been here for the first time. So the so bases ba are different. So obviously. basically, you're creating a, a backstory. S well, we're trying to, given the limited amount of re art resources that we have, at least we try. We but try to be creative. Yeah, I like that. I, it's a good idea. I um, really lo like it. But yeah, regarding the bases, so the closer you get to the bases, so outposts and the bases themselves, there's mm. going to be more and more military props um, available, or visible at least. Um, 
overall, I like I said, I try to do it. Sometimes we just can't get around it. Or, for instance, in La Trinité, we we just went the other way around. Like the um, you had the roadblock, which yes. is obviously militarized, um, but it works as well. It just as long as there's it's not everywhere. It, it it makes it stand out for the one for once, but I wouldn't enjoy seeing it everywhere because then it just run from one sand back to another becomes a bit repetitive. Mm -hmm. There's a question for you. How long do you spend per average on a location? That varies. Um, that varies. That's quite. I can't even depends on what. For instance, we don't work on them f like full stop. Like we we push them from to an alpha stage, and then most of the time we work on a different one, because obviously you end up making mistakes, and by working on them constantly, you, s you risk ignoring them or mm -hmm. just not noticing them. So a change of scenery definitely um, helps us, that if we come back, like we, like we did with St. Marie um, in this case, um, I d we didn't touch it for a long time. Mm -hmm. And then when we came back to it, given the experience that we have, um, we n started to immediately notice things that we didn't back then. So, but to answer the question, how long? I actually don't know. Um, a week or a month? It's going to be rather a, a month, I think, in total. Definitely areas like, or locations like St. Marie, which have combined, uh, like combined missions. Mm -hmm. We have Link in here as well, together with Clash. It takes uh, takes a bit more time to tweak it or to play the things, like, uh, to make them blend better. Because if you were to play the link in St. Marie, you would you should still be able to recognize it from the start. So mm -hmm. some, some landmarks actually make their way in both. Mm -hmm. so obviously, the sandbox ones do. Um, but even in mission props, we try to make it recognizable to a certain extent. All right. Oh, yeah. Weapons and damage were the topic of the previous stream. Yeah. So yes, there is. Co there was a question about hardcore mode. Yes, there is going mm. to be a hardcore mode, but that doesn't matter. Uh, mean that uh, the damage will change because we're doing a different type of hardcore mode. Because we want players to. Uh, what happened? Oh, they won. Oh, we won actually. Sorry. We won. Because we want players to sort sort of sort of uh, learn in the normal mode and then get b uh, into the hardcore mode and have a different experience, but with the same weapons and the same damage. So, so yeah, they're disconnecting heavily. Let's hope some of them will stay. Or we might connect to another one. So let's see. Can do. Anyway, uh, the Saint Mary location was. Uh, we originally thought it will be pretty hard on players, but they end up liking it. Do you think it's because it's uh, a bit of armor? I think that definitely, like given the the, the open areas, it, it definitely feels pretty armor. But um, I'm not sure. I think back then it was just refreshing. Like we've, we we played Laporte two weeks, um, which was heavily urbanized. Like, uh, it definitely, um, I think, gave a completely different aspects even to like um clash as well it has a it had a different layout the port clash was um a bit different so um, i'm not sure i think that just the fact that it was refreshing the first days we noticed that players were like having like they had troubles getting used to um to the <laughs> the the differences but at by the end of the, the week by the end of the run we noticed that players were starting to uh, enjoy it. So they're setting up the mission for us. Which is going to be? Thank you, guys. Uh, that's the raid. Which raid one? mode. Oh, yeah, yeah. We that talked about it. So we can show the changes, actually. That one has definitely changed. <laughs> yeah. For the better. Yeah, I think so, too. So if you guys don't know the mission, it's... <coughs> 
uh, it's called. I think it was in the M O U T. Previous run. Yeah, I think so. The run, the f oh, the console run, yeah. So the, the third run actually, hosted Mount. I can't remember. I it's too many things. So. Too many locations and everything. <coughs> anyway, uh, we answered the the question about the hardcore mode. In the fatigue as well. Yeah, the fatigue as well. It's. Have you considered doing different scenarios based on the environment? For example, allow diving, insertions, or parachuting, things, insertion, right? Where the map allows you to deploy in the water or the air to surprise the defenders. I find that simply sneaking up to an objective becomes pretty repetitive after a while. Did you actually implement feedback from players as well? So, one at a time. So, let's say raid and uh, diving and parachuting insertions. Yes, we've tried it and it uh, didn't work. I mean, it didn't work technically because it had many problems. Uh, because we can't easily limit uh, the way where you parachute at and stuff like that. <coughs> also, the diving is limited to the to the water, obviously, to the sea. So it would work only for locations close to the sea and stuff like that. So we might go revisit that idea, but for the time being, I would say no. And the other question, did you actually implement feedback from players as well? Yes, we did, and that's where you, um, that's yes, we where we you shine. Yes, we definitely have been um, applying feedback where possible. Um, given the fact that the last, um, the last run, basically, before we added feedback was last week, um, like for some locations that had their run a couple of weeks ago, we were definitely able to make some bigger changes. Uh, for instance, Maud. Mm -hmm. Maud is one that drastically improved. Um, same for Saint Marie. There were some some really visible changes. Um, so we definitely um, check out the ana the the analytic feedback that we get. Mm -hmm. cause it's uh, and uh, obviously the feedback tracker and such. We <laughs> if bugs occur and we we they've been put on the feedback tracker, we definitely fix them as fast as possible. Um, but yeah, the, the data analytic feedback that we, that we receive, <laughs> nice. um, it definitely helps and we, um, it allows us to, to basically, um, see whether or not the design choices that we made and how we implemented them, if they were successful, if not, it's immediately visible on, um, on the data. Um, I think a part of, yeah, actually. Forgot it, but the dev blog that is going to be released tomorrow should actually um, highlight a couple of the how and where we applied these changes. So mm -hmm. definitely check that out tomorrow. All right, so let's talk about the uh, mount location. As we saw, uh, the location is uh, made of uh, dilapidated buildings, it's and uh, it's uh, really sort of that military training site. So for the MOUT training. So, what did we actually do with it? Um, the first iteration. Oh. Do you need the map? We can actually. Yeah, that'd be that'd be interesting for. All right. So, in general, um, a lot of the issues that were shown, even in the data, were the entry points. Um, either they were hidden or not very so like yeah. guiding yeah. players towards the entry points was something yeah. that we we had issues with, or players were expecting er areas to be available. And they were just they were just looking at a plain full wall, so it's frustrating. Obviously, after a while, if you were to play the map um, over and over again, you would start to get the hang of it. But for entry players or beginners, it was it was a bit hard to read. So we, well, we um, I think Yara did a, a great job at going back to uh, the drawing board, basically mm -hmm. look at um, the issues that the data showed, and um, apply changes, which I think were definitely for the better. For instance, some houses had dead ends, so you would you would enter the zone or thinking that you were entering the zone, and um, you just bump into a dead wall or a dead end, which is obviously off-putting at first, um, resulting in you not going to that area anyway from the beginning. So just blocking them off from the start. Yeah, I get it. Helps. 
Uh, for instance, this area um, has been cleaned up. Otherwise, you would have to zigzag here on the what the or the current player that we're spectating is visiting. Mm -hmm. Like it was, uh, you had to zigzag your way through some some um, the walls. Concrete walls, right? Just it's not ideal. So opening it up, but playing around with like adding smart cover on certain areas definitely helps. Um, not only with navigation, but al also to still protect the player in making certain movements. All right. So I think we cleared up most of the concrete walls that were there. Yes, and we started adding, or what I can see here is that uh, we started adding more recognizable entry points. Um, it wouldn't be the same. <laughs> the tunnel is in there, which I'm <laughs> really happy about that it's actually made its way in. Um, like we, we try to make sure that there's only, like a simple rule is like try to keep one of this, like not, not use three times the same truck, cause mm -hmm. um, especially in the same area. Because if you want to call out, he's at the truck, well, Obviously. which one? You can't even tell if there's a difference because they're exactly the same. Where now we have, we have a tank or a, a tank. Um, there's one truck. So there's one of each, so you can easily, if you've played the map once or twice, and you've kind of like wandered around, and you see, all right, there's a tank here, and if someone calls out, he's at the tank, you know exactly where yeah, he's yeah, coming yeah. from. Same for this tunnel, like he's coming in via the tunnel. There's so only one. So we're basically following the same rules as for the other yeah. locations. So These were things that we learned while working on these locations, that yeah, yeah. recognizability is definitely one of the, the things that we want to uh, focus on. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's it's for the best. Like uh, we did the changes, there was there were just too many concrete walls and stuff like that. So it for the at the beginning it kind of makes sense, uh, but then when we played it over and over again, it, it just got too I don't know boring. It's repetitive. Like uh, right now, yeah. like like I said, areas that were not <coughs> available right now, like the the entry point that you just got shot from by a friendly. Wha what happened? All right. Um, it was not there at first. Giving like forcing players to go all the way around, basically bypass like a quarter of the map, not being able to enter it. Where now it's a recognizable, visible entry point with uh, smartly placed objects to guide players towards it. Sure. <coughs> so this is a very good tactic. Playing dead. Oh, at least we call it playing dead. It works it does, in Link. It does, yeah, it does <laughs> from far away. It's just really hard to spot the difference. Yeah. But again, yeah, it's part of the advanced movement. This is, uh, that's an, uh, another thing we added in Project Argo. The, uh, the graffiti. Yes. These are made... Uh, especially for Project Argo. So I really like them. It adds to the atmosphere a lot. And also these signs, the C, A, B. Yeah, like, like I think we've touched this before, like we had limited art resources yeah. so or artists available. So when we used them, we, we had to make sure that they were like, it was, we would be able to use them like 100%. Um, There's a question for you. Did we make changes to a Trinity Raid? Uh, bu 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 minor ones, yes. There were some minor tweaks in um, some, I think two, we noticed that two of the um, uh, spawn points were rarely used because again, we, s we noticed afterwards that it was rather unclear f uh, once you spawned there where to, like how to safely make your way to the, to the objective or to the area. So they have been moved. Um, I suggest give it a try, and some some minor bugs, visibility or glitches were fixed yeah. as well. So there have been some changes added to it. But that was actually uh, one I think the first or second raid relocation we did, right? Uh, it was basically when we designed when, when the new started. raid yeah. system. That was like three people, three designers were working on an e each of their own like version of how a raid location should look like. So yeah, that was one of the draft locations. Uh, that's a question for me. Mm -hmm. What is Project Argo's target audience? It seems unclear because Arma 3 players would rather play Arma while I'm seeing the game being marketed towards new people that aren't familiar with other Bohemia Interactive products e either. Well, <coughs> first of all, Project Argo is still a public prototype. 
So that means it's not heavily marketed for the new people, but it's it should be for the players that Arma is too much probably, and uh, something else uh, I don't know. I don't want to name really is too unrealistic, too arcadeish, and stuff like that. So somewhere in between. Definitely, we would like to get new players. That's why we cut down some of the hardcore Arma controls. We made it simpler, uh, easier to pick up. So th free. It also works. Free. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but for now, it's free. So it might not be, but it might not be released. So we don't know. And uh, well, so to answer the question. It should be for the new players, also for the Arma players that uh, just don't want, they, for some of them, they want change or something like that. So, because so, uh, basically the people who are playing with us today are Arma players and just they just like it. So, wouldn't fixing performance issue also get more players? It would, and we are working on it. So, fixing performance issues is one of our highest priority at the moment because it, it just breaks the game completely, and we know that, obviously. But as we've mentioned in the previous streams, and I can't repeat it enough, it's just not so easy in the Arma engine. And that's not me saying, like, it's not, imp it's not possible at all. It is possible. It just takes time, and uh, we just need to give the resources at the at the right place, and we might fix it. Seems like we might actually win this round. Hopefully, we did, and we downloaded. Nice. Because some of the yeah, actually some of the people uh, complained or something like that that. Uh, the rounds only end up by killing each other, but we end up downloading the data. It's a bit misleading because when um, we looked at the data, it's it's okay. Like it uh, is. It, it's uh, it's roughly what we expected. For some, obviously, for some objectives, it's a bit less. Hence, why we try to focus on them. Um, True that. So. So where were you going to hide? What are we defending? Oh, A. We are defending. Uh, I remember there was a military tower right over yes, here. Yes, so this area actually changed quite quite a lot. Quite a lot. Uh, like, the objective used to be inside this compound, which was a clean house back then. Well, it was derelict, but it was not broken. So it ended up in... There was only one entry point, which was a, a massive choke point for players to actually overcome. Because when the defender actually made his way in, that, that was it. It was... Unless you, you were capable to throw magnificent grenades, um, which in Arma is definitely not easy, you, there was no way of getting him out. If he decided to sit inside and just uh, keep his eye on the door, that was it. And there was the entrance point. This here. used to be the entrance, which now actually changed. So there's an entrance on the left side, which is this house. This is... Uh, for mm, nice. For Arma players, this is actually a recognizable one-way building. Normally, but this is one of the limited art sources that we actually used on this building was we added a, se a second door, mm -hmm. which now we can actually use to um, use it like the way we did, like make it an, uh, a more... An entrance point. Yeah. Or we can actually use it next to houses, actually as a, like a, even though it's called an add-on house before in Arma, it would not work because you, <laughs> you were to... You would put it next to a house, in, um, letting players think that they can get inside, which they can, but they cannot get further than they're just looking at a plain wall. So now this allows for us to complete to uh, create some more modular mm -hmm. uh, buildings. Another question for me: uh, It's not about level design, but mm. we kind of answered that uh, the last time, so you can definitely check the last stream. But anyway, I'm going to repeat it. It seems that when you've been hit by bullets, it doesn't affect your aiming and running. Uh, it will, <laughs> hopefully, because we are working on we're working on something really interesting. I don't want want to spoil that, but it should 
uh, it should fix the problems of uh, two guys just hitting each other and it does nothing to your aiming or to your stepping, sidestepping and stuff like that. We lost, so I'm afraid this is going to be the end of the stream. It was a bit longer than I expected, <laughs> and uh, especially with the technical problems, which I'm sorry about. But I hope you guys enjoyed it, and uh, in please enjoy the Christmas update. Uh, we hope you like it. And next week, there might be another stream, last one before the Christmas. It should be really special. And... Uh, Let's uh, let's let's answer one more last question. Besides keeping the open prototype free, why did you decide it was better to release as a standalone game rather than easily downloadable mod for Arma? Well, because or it was it was the decision uh, originally that Project Argo will be a standalone mod, a total modification of Arma 3. So that's why we did that. I'm going to show the equipment screen, by the way. And, uh, yeah, it was just a decision. And it was a good good, uh, good opportunity for us to try the, the Bohemia Incubator. Yes, definitely. So, yeah, that's about it. Okay. So, thanks for watching. We're sorry about the technical issues. I'm glad that I had all, m all three level designers of Project Argo here. It was a blast. <laughs> it was really good to be here. So maybe next week. And bye-bye. <laughs>